بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله صلى الله عليه وسلم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته Welcome back to Tajweed Made Easy This is your brother Abu Muhammad In the last few lessons we looked at the مخارج الحروف Where the letters are articulated from Today, inshallah, we're going to start a new topic, which is the sifat al-huruf, the characteristics of the letters. We find out how the letters are pronounced. It is not enough to know where the makharij al-huruf are, to know where the places of articulation point are. It's very important to also know how we pronounce it. Because if we don't pronounce the letters properly, even if we, if we, even if we take out from the correct makharaj, if we do not give it its correct characteristics, this letter might even change to, might change to another letter, or the least that can be said is that it's not going to be pronounced properly. So for example, if I say خالدين, خالدين, if I actually pronounce the kha from its correct makhraj, which is the top of the throat, kha, okay? But I've taken out from its correct makhraj, I mean, but I've not pronounced it properly. The Arabs used to pronounce kha with heaviness by elevating the back of the tongue. Kha, خالدين, خالدين. Kha instead of khalidin. If I say Ar Rahman Ar Rahim, I've, I've taken out the Ra from his correct makhraj, but I did not pronounce it properly. So we find out which letters are heavy, which letters are light. We find out which letters air flows with the letter, and which letters air does not flow with it. We find out which letters sound flow with, it, with the letter, and which letters sound do not flow with it. Which letters have a nasalization sound, which letters have an echo sound, and so on. Have an echo effect, the bouncing effect, and so on. Now I have here on the board, Sifat al-Huruf, now we're going to, sum now we're going to summarize Sifat al-Huruf. We're going to have a general overview of what Sifat al-Huruf is. And inshallah, then we're going to go point by point in more detail, starting from the first two points today, inshallah. So we have here the first, there's two groups. Sifat laha did, characteristics that have opposites. So these will come in pairs, okay? And the group of letters will be opposite to other group of letters. And Sifat la did laha. Characteristics that do not have opposites. This, this will just these letters, the, these groups will just come individually. Inshallah, we're going to do most of them, and not all of them, but most of sifat la did laha. So if we start from here, sifat la did, the first part is al hams and al jar. This is to do with air flowing, flowing with the letter and air, air not flowing the letters. Al hams letters, the ten letters. Inshallah, we find out what they are. Whenever we pronounce these letters, air would flow with the letters, and the rest of the letters are al jar. Air does not flow with the letters. We have here al-shidda, al-tawasut, and al-rakhawa. Point number two is to do with the flowing of sound. A group of letters, because of their strength, the sound does not flow with them. A group of letters, because of their weakness, a sound, the sound flows with them. And a group of letters, the al-tawasut in the middle, the partially al-rakhawa, partially al-shidda. Some okay, part of it we're going to make it flow, and other parts of it we're going to keep it in, in, the, in between the al-rakhawa and al-shidda. The third group is al-istifal and isti'la. This is to do with heaviness and lightness. Group of letters, the Arabs used to pronounce it heavily, in a heavy manner. And the group of letters, the Arabs used to pronounce it lightly. And here, al-infitah and al-itbaq, this is the fourth group. This is to do with the tongue, some parts of the tongue, when we pronounce some letters, the sound, so some parts of the tongue, they will, they will, comp they will be compressed with the roof of the mouth. We'll find out which letters they are. So this is the sifat laha bid, characteristics that have opposites. So they come in pairs and they're opposites of each other. Now sifat la bid laha, characteristics that do not have, uh, that do not have uh, opposites. Number one is as safir. We'll find out the three letters. The natu naturally, when we pronounce these three letters, we, we would have a whistling sound whenever we pronounce these letters. We have here alin. Two letters, when they're in a certain situation, we pronounce it with softness, without pressure on, on the lips. We have here at, at tikrar, this just means repetition. The only sifat that we're told not to do here, we'll find out there's a letter. If we don't pronounce it properly, okay, we'll be repeating that letter, so the repetition. We have here at tafashi, there's a letter that's got the characteristics of spreading. Whenever we say this letter, we have to do a sort of spreading. Shall we find out which letter this is? And we have here. We have here al ghunna two letters that whenever we pronounce these two letters, a nasalization sound would automatically flow through the nasal passage going down. And last one, we have al qalqala which means the letters that have a bouncing effect. Okay, whenever we pronounce these letters, when we're stopping these letters, there's a bouncing effect. 
So this is in a nutshell what Sifat al Huruf is. Inshallah, now we're going to look at the first two parts, Al Hams and Jahr, to do with the flowing of, uh, of, the, of breath, and Al Shidda Tawasat and Rawa to do with the flowing of sound. So on the board here now, we have two types of characteristics. Number one, to do with the flowing of air. Number two, to do with the flowing of sound. So the first group here, this is Al Hams, and opposite is Al Jahr. Al Hams, just a, a group of letters. One group of letters, ten letters. These letters, whenever we pronounce these letters, air should flow with these letters. Why? Because of, of the weakness in its origin. So how do we find this out? Whenever we pronounce this letter, Fatha kasra dhamma, but with the sukoon will be clearest. For example, the first one is fa. If we put our hand in front of us, so try it, and say af, af, you feel that air flows with it. Same thing, ah, air would flow with it. Ah. Then you have here, ath. So whenever we found we we pronounce these ten letters, with the sukun will be the clearest. Air will flow with it due to weakness in its origin. The opposite side is the al jahr groups, which is the rest of the letters. Air does not flow with this with the letter due to its strength in, in its in its origin. So the rest of the letters. So if I say, for example, ba, if you put your hand and say ab ab, you notice no air will flow. Alt air will not flow with it. There's a little amount because of breathing, okay, naturally we find, but no significant amount will, will flow with it. These letters, you f find significant amount of air flowing with it. So you, you probably ask, what's so special? Or what's the significance of knowing this? Basically, for example, letters of Jahr, if we pronounce the letters of Jahr with air flowing, two things would happen. Either that letter, it might change into another letter, or that letter will not be pronounced properly. For example, the ba, if I say ab, so try ab, you find no, no air flows, ab. But if I say the ba in a way that I, I uh, put air flowing with it, so ab, ab, so bismillah, bismillah, rahman, rahim, then I've changed the ba into a p in English. So this changes into another letter. Or ta, for example. Some people, whenever they pronounce ta, ta is from the letters that air does not flow with it. So mina shaytani, taani, you find no air flows in it. But if I say min al-shaytani, taani rajim min al-shaytani rajim, and make air flow with it, then this, this, the ta is not, is not pronounced clearly. It's not pronounced correctly. So this is to do with the flowing of, of the air. Now here, next group, this is to do with the flowing of sound. Three groups of letters. Number one, ashidda, which means strength. Number two, tawasat in the middle, and al-rukhawa, the soft letters. The shidda letters are ten letters. Ajidu qit, bakat, okay, hamza, jim, dal, Qaf, Ta, Ba, Kaf, Ta, these letters, they're clearer when they're sukun, but with Fata, Kasa, Dhamma, whenever we pronounce these letters, the sound of the letter stops, but with the sukun will be the clearest. What do I mean by this? For example, Ya Muru here, when we pronounce a letter that has a, the letter of the Shidda letters, for example, has a sukun, like Ya Muru, the Hamza has a sukun. What we do is, we go right to the Makhraj and come out straight away. So, Ya Muru, Ya Muru. So, two things, remember two things. One, the sound. Once we pronounce, once we touch the makhraj, we let go. Ya'muru, ya'muru. And secondly, if you notice between the hamza and the next letter, the mim, if you notice, there's a gap. Ya'muru, ya'muru. Okay, it's not going to go and connect with the next letter straight. It's going to be pronounced, then little gap, then go to the next letter. So ya'muru, ya'muru. Same thing. Takdib, takdib, touch the gap. Takdib, takdib. Takdib, the little gap between kaf and, and the next letter. Kaf and dal, takdib. These letters are called the uh, ashidda letters. And this, this group is called at-tawasat now. At-tawasat just means in between ashidda and rakhawa. If ashidda, we just touch, let go, in the little gap, ar-rakhawa would mean, would touch, then stay a little bit, and there's no gap between that letter to the next letter. So at-tawasat is in between. So there are five letters, which is lin umar letters. There are lin umar letters. Lin Umar just means soft in Umar, because Umar's character was a, uh, he was very stern. Okay, so Lin Umar, soft in Umar. These letters, when we touch the letter, we're not going to do like a shidda, touch then let go. When we touch, we're going to touch, hold then let go. Touch, hold a little bit then let go. So here, alhamdu bi alhamdu. So lam here from the Lin Umar letter it has a sukun, alhamdu, alhamdulillah, and we're not going to do like a shidda, alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, or else this is not giving its characteristic. It's got the characteristics of touch, hold a little bit, then let go. Alhamdu. Same thing with the meme here. Meme. Alhamdu. Alhamdu. Not Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. But Alhamdu. 
iyaka na'budu na'budu so this will be in between so the first one will be touch and quickly let go there's a, little, there's a gap between that and the next letter this one will be partially touching and let go so touch then let go so touch hold a little bit then let go and lastly here we have ar rakhawa ar rakhawa are the remaining letters these letters whenever we pronounce these letters once we touch the makhraj once we touch the makhraj we're going to hold a little bit and then pronounce the next letter so al maghdubi maghdubi al maghdubi the ghain compared to the ain na'budu na'budu the ghain will be a bit longer maghdubi maghdubi so similar to at tawassut but the flowing of sound will be a bit longer so al maghdubi al mag maghdubi al maghdubi and here akhraja and if you notice between ghain and the next letter there's no gap so maghdubi straight away maghdubi maghdubi whereas ashidda ya'muru ya'muru there's a little gap here there's no gap here there is gap here there's no gap here partially gap partially no gap so these letters the remaining letters are ar rakhawa so three groups of letters ashidda these the eight letters these letters sound does not flow with it the opposite side here ar rakhawa and the middle at tawassut inshallah in the next lesson we're going to start the huruf al istifan and huruf al istila tarqiq and tafkhim we're going to find out the heavy letters and the light letters, inshallah. Until then, jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.